Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Joseph, and uh, apologies for the uh, late uh, joining. So we are going to start our discussion today. My name is Joseph. I'm a real estate research analyst at Site on Investments, and uh, I thank everyone for tuning in in today's session. We are going to go straight into our discussion for the day. But before that, we are going. I'm going to introduce my panelists. So Alan and Nefi, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Joseph. Uh, good evening. Please, sorry. Uh, please confirm that you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so uh, thank you. My name is Efi uh, Zuma. I'm a real estate research and investment analyst at Saiton. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Naguta, a real estate research analyst at Saiton Investments. Thank you, Alan and Efi. So we are going to go straight to our discussion for the day, which is Real Estate Investment Trust progress in Kenya. And I'm going to start with the first question, which most of our listeners might be asking themselves, what are real estate investment trusts? So I'm going to direct the first question to Alan. In brief, what are real estate investment trusts and how do they operate? And just give us a brief overview of the rates market in Kenya. Okay, uh, thank you, thank you. So I'll go straight ahead to discuss what are REITs. Real estate investment trusts, as they, as they are called, uh, REITs uh, allow individuals to invest in real estate without directly owning properties. Uh, they operate by pooling uh, funds from multiple investors. Uh, this is the, with the aim to purchase and manage income generated properties such as office, office buildings, shopping, shopping centers, apartments and hotels. Uh, rates are generated uh, from tenants and also through capital appreciation. And also there are, there's usually uh, four parties who collaborate to guarantee the protection of uh, the investor's uh, interests. These are uh, the promoter, uh, the rate manager, the trustee, and also a property manager. Uh, so in brief, a promoter with a setting up a rate scheme. Uh, Take relevant approvals, draft uh, trust deeds, draft uh, prospectus, and also an offering memoranda. Oh, okay. Uh, also, there's a rate manager, which is a company that has been incorporated in Kenya uh, and has been issued a license by the Capital Markets Authority to provide real estate and fund management services uh, for a rate scheme on University of Kenya. Saiton Asset Managers Limited, Econ Investment Manage Management, uh, Stanley Kenya Limited, Nabo Capital, uh, just to name a few. Also, we have the trust uh, that assets on behalf of, of uh, our main role is to act on behalf of investors uh, by assessing the feasibility of investment proposal put forward by the rate manager, also ensuring that the assets of the scheme are invested in accordance with uh, the trust deed planning and delivery of the construction uh so in kenya uh we have types of rates that is the income uh, rate uh, real estate uh, investment trust which is a type of success of uh, alan. So, alan i don't yeah, know sorry. if I, I have a problem with my net but i think you are breaking a bit uh, is this is the same for everybody uh, you are breaking quite Effie, a lot. Hear... Oh, sorry, sorry. I think it's my network. Yeah. Maybe uh, check on it. Can you hear me well now? Yes. My audible. Yes, now okay. we can hear you. Okay, let me continue. Sorry. Uh, I was talking about uh, the types of rates uh, in Kenya. Uh, first, we have the income rate, uh, which is a type of rate in which uh, investors uh, put their capital for purposes of acquiring uh, real estate, which include uh, residential, uh, commercial, and other real estate asset types. So uh, investors in this I rate uh, gain through capital appreciation and rental income. We also have the development rate, which is a type of rate in which investors pull their capital uh, to acquire real estate with a view of undertaking development and construction projects. We also have Islamic rates, uh, which is a unique type of rate. Uh, primarily, uh, they uh, invest, investors primarily, uh, the uh, Islamic uh, rate uh, invests in income producing Sharia 
compliant real estate developments. So a fund manager is required to conduct a compliance test before investing to ensure uh, it is Sharia compliant that non-permissible activities are not conducted in the estate. And if so, then on a minimal basis. I don't know if you can hear me well, Joseph. It's a bit better now. All right. So uh, I'll go forward to discuss uh, the history of rates, just so uh, you can understand how rates uh, came about in Kenya. So the history uh, starts early 20th century in the United States. Uh, the comp concept uh, emerged in 1960 when the US Congress passed legislation enabling uh, creation of rates as a way to provide all investors, uh, not, not just the wealthy, but also uh, other, in other small uh, investors uh, to access income producing real estate investments. And these rates gained popularity due to their attractive features, including the high dividend yields, portfolio diversification, and uh, liquidity. And this success translated to Africa, where Ghana and Nigeria led the way for the continent by launching uh, the rate frameworks in 1994 and 2007, uh, becoming uh, the first African countries to establish uh, rates. Uh, Kenya followed suit in 2013, and uh, South, South Africa joined uh, the ranks later. So the evolution of rates uh, globally has been characterized by continuous innovation and adaptation to changing market dynamics and regulatory frameworks. Today, rates are recognized as essential component of the global real estate investment landscape, offering investors a diversified and accessible way to invest in income-generating real estate assets. So uh, real the real estate sector generally in Kenya has been a significant contributor to uh, the country's GDP, growing steadily over the past five years with a compounding compounded annual growth rate of 5.5%. Uh, in quarter three, for example, in 2023, the sector expanded by 5.4%, reaching 785 uh, billion Kenyan shillings, which highlights uh, this increasing importance. Uh, so the factors that uh, contributed to this growth uh, like uh, the aggressive retail expansion, uh, the population and urbanization growth, and also the hospitality sector recovery. So despite uh, these uh, uh, positives, uh, there are also challenges which include uh, high, cost, high construction costs, uh, oversupply in circular sectors, uh, uh, difficulties in accessing finance, uh, increased uh, non-performing loans, uh, which uh, exacerbated uh, the challenges. So to address the funding shortfalls that came about uh, in the real estate sector, stakeholders have turned to alternative uh, financing avenues, such as REITs, which is regulated by the Capital Markets Authority. Uh, but however, in Kenya, since 2013, since it was uh, enacted, the Kenyan rate market faces challenges, approval processes, I mean, minimum investor awareness. Currently, we have one rate which is listed, that is Lab Trust. Elam Fari was delisted. This is in 12, on 12th February. Uh, we also have other studying on the unquoted securities plat platform, such as Acorn, B Rate, and Ariat. But despite uh, these challenges, uh, rates are seen as crucial in bridging the funding gap in real estate, and also complementing uh, initiatives like uh, affordable housing. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Alan, for uh, that uh, insightful overview. And now this will drive me to the, my second question, which I know many of us might be asking. Uh, what are the potential benefits for investors who choose to invest in rates? I'm going to direct that to Alan. Okay. Uh, uh, the potential benefits for investors who are looking to invest in rates uh, might include uh, diversification. Uh, you can, yeah, yeah uh, rates prov uh, provide a diversified uh, exposure to various real estate assets, including residential, commercial, and industrial properties, thereby reducing uh, individual investment risks that is associated with. with 
uh, allocating uh, money into one asset, real estate asset. So the, this diversification will help to mitigate uh, the impact of localized market uh, downtowns uh, or vacancies on overall returns. Uh, secondly, uh, rates typically offer uh, d- attractive dividend yields as they are required by law to distribute a significant portion of the income to stakeholders in the form of uh, dividends. Like in Kenya, uh, by, it is required by law that uh, they allocate around 80% of their profits to uh, the shareholders. So uh, this allocation, this attractive uh, dividend yields uh, can provide investors a stream of income making the rates particularly appealing uh, for income-oriented investors, such as all uh, retirees or even those seeking passive income. Uh, another potential benefit to that will be a tax benefit. Uh, since uh, uh, REITs uh, has some exemptions in it, if you own uh, shares in a rate, you might not have to pay corporate taxes on the profits uh, the company makes from owning real estate properties. Uh, the corporate tax, let me just explain, uh, it is currently set at 30% annually, and it is a tax that is levied on profits earned by corporations or businesses. It is usually calculated based on the net uh, profits of the company, for deducting uh, liable expenses and deductions. So instead of this, the taxes are usually paid when the rate uh, distributes profits to shareholders. So this is where the uh, withholding tax comes in, uh, which is set at 5% for residents and 10% for non-residents. So this tax is deducted uh, the source of income before it's paid to the recipient. Uh, so these taxes are typically lower uh, than the regular income taxes, as you can uh, notice, uh, of which the rates are in itself uh, exempted uh, from the income tax through the finance bill of 2019, which can be a good thing for investors uh, seeking to invest in rates. Also, if a company wants to transfer its properties to a rate, they may not have to pay stamp duty, uh, which is a tax on legal documents related to property transactions. So these tax benefits may make investing in rates more attractive because they can potentially save you money on taxes. Uh, Furthermore, uh, investing in rates offers uh, liquidity compared to direct real estate ownership. Uh, rate shares are bought and sold on public exchanges, uh, providing investors with the flexibility to easily enter and exit uh, positions as needed, unlike in owning a physical real estate, uh, which can be liquid and uh, will require significant time and effort to sell. So uh, there's an advantage of liquidity in rates. Uh, moreover, uh, rates offers uh, accessibility to real estate market with lower capital requirements compared to direct uh, property ownership. Uh, investors can gain exposure to high-value real estate assets with relatively small investments, allowing for greater div- diversification and risk management within uh, their investment portfolios. So overall, uh, investing in rates provides investors with the potential for capital appreciation regular income distributions, portfolio diversification, liquidity, and also accessibility to the real estate market, making uh, this investment vehicle an attractive investment option for the for a wide range of uh, investors. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, thank you, Alan. Those are some interesting benefits to the investor. Uh, now we are going to shift our focus on affordable housing, and I'm going to direct this question to Effie. Given the significance of affordable housing in our country, how do rates contribute to this agenda? Effie, if you can hear me. Uh, I can hear you. Okay, thank you, Joseph, for the question. So in relation to affordable housing in our country, uh, currently as is, the affordable housing framework does not incorporate rates, uh, or rather it has not paid much attention into the potential of these investments instruments process when it comes to availing funds or financing that is directed towards housing and housing infrastructure. So uh, we've established that rates were introduced in 2013, and since then we only have four rates, uh, uh, of which none has funded any type of residential properties. Uh, Only Acorn Holdings have utilized rates to develop uh, property, and that is in the line of purpose-built student accommodation, 
which is a special asset class and can't per se be categorized as residential property. So um, uh, rates uh, since the inception have faced numerous challenges uh, as we are going to discuss, but a compounding factor is um, the underdevelopment of Kenya's capital markets. So because of these uh, challenges, uh, majority of housing uh, investment in African countries, uh, Kenya included, comes from government debt uh, or domestic savings uh, or banks rather than from uh, capital markets. So it's against uh, this backdrop that rates emerge as a strategic tool to mobilize capital, uh, streamline development processes, as well as catalyze, uh, catalyze both the demand and supply sides uh, of the affordable housing agenda. So to look at the significance of rates in the affordable housing uh, in Kenya, we have to look at, uh, in the potential contribution to the housing agenda, we have to look at it uh, twofold. First, uh, we have to look at it from the demand side, and second, we have to look at uh, the supply side. So uh, on the demand side, uh, rates uh, democratize access to real estate investment opportunities. Uh, attracting diverse pool uh, investors to diverse investors to pool resources. So we've uh, in the definition of rates that uh, Alan has given us is that the investment vehicles uh, instruments that pull resources from a diverse uh, investors, and then these uh, resources are directed uh, towards either purchasing property or development. So. Um, REITs, because they democratize access to real estate investment opportunities, uh, they have the potential to complement government initiatives uh, like KMRC, that is the Kenya Mortgage Refinance Company, as well as the National Housing Development Funds. And the other thing also is that uh, REITs are private sector led, meaning unlike these other initiatives for, uh, by the government, they are not funded by taxpayers' money. So this again removes the unnecessary burden to citizens uh, to fund these initiatives. The second thing is rates can act as uh, of takers. And when I talk about rates, uh, in this point particularly, I'm referring to uh, I rates, these are income rates. So through agreements to purchase or sell uh, or lease predetermined quantities of housing units, rates offer developers reliable revenue streams, uh, increasing the attractiveness of projects to investors. So, um, it reduces uncertainties related to sales uh, of projects. So uh, if a developer knows that uh, once I complete my development, these units are actually going to be taken up or they're actually going to be sold, uh, that helps uh, assure them of a reliable revenue stream and uh, uh, it bolsters investor confidence as well as project sustainability. So on the supply side, rates, they have, they possess, uh, wealth uh, a wealth of expertise in project management so rates uh, in kenya are led by trustees uh, who possess extensive expertise in project management uh, aspects of project uh, pr property development asset management uh, all these uh, are crucial for affordable housing initiatives so their dedicated teams uh, can help ensure timely as well as budget friendly project execution minimizing delays and as well as cost or cost overruns so streamlining development processes uh, we've established that uh, d rates are the ones that are involved in development so uh, rates can streamline development by leveraging partnerships uh, with seasoned developers and property managers so uh, this uh, they do in terms of uh, collaborating with industry professionals to enhance uh, operational efficiency and optimizing construction costs and uh, while they do that, they ensure that there is timely delivery of housing units uh, because their dedicated teams oversee that the entire development process from inception to completion uh, is uh, efficient, as well as they navigate regulatory frameworks and manage construction timelines, uh, all which ex help expedite project delivery without compromising quality. So really when we talk about uh, the significance uh, of how rates can contribute to the affordable housing agenda, we have to look at uh, the potential of rates in catalyzing both the demand and supply sides. Yeah. 
Thank you, Effie. Those are well thought uh, um, points. So we, you've mentioned that rates started operating in 2013. That means that they've been in the market for, let's say, 10 years. On the same line, uh, Effie, what are the significant amounts that have been achieved in the rate sector in Kenya? Okay. Um... I would not exactly say there have been significant milestones. Uh, and this I would um, explain it in terms of the Kenyan rates market is still underperforming when you compare it with the rates markets uh, in other countries and other jurisdictions, also in Africa, such as uh, particularly South Africa. And this is because um, if you look at uh, the rates market, uh, capitalization to the gross domestic product of these countries in Kenya it stands at 0.01 uh, percent which is almost non-existent when you compare this to other countries like South Africa which is at at least 3.1 percent yet uh, these two countries initiated or put in place rates regulations at around the same time uh, but I would say there have been notable activities and achievements in the sector so uh, just to mention a few, I, I think the first is uh, we have to acknowledge that uh, Kenya is among the few and first countries to initiate rates alongside South Africa, also Ghana, Tanzania, Rwanda, and Morocco. So yes, uh, the sector is performing dismally, but we are among the first countries in Africa to initiate rates. So I think that can, uh, or we can put that as an achievement. And the second thing is um, we have four rates uh, currently that have been authorized by CMA, that is the Capital Markets Authority. And uh, these include La Trastimara. This one was launched in 2023. Uh, there is Fahari IRED uh, launched in 2015 and recently got delisted. And there are the two Econ rates, uh, uh, that is Econ D rate and IRED, which are currently Sorry, which are currently trading on the uh, unquoted securities platform USP. So, if you compare uh, these statistics, we have four listed rates. We have four rates. Sorry, only one is listed. Uh, in comparison to other African countries like Ghana, Tanzania, and Morocco, which only have one rate each, um, we have made uh, quite significant progress in terms of the number of rates that we have. Although at a slower pace as compared to countries like South Africa, which has uh, at least 30 rates, uh, which uh, yet we put in place rates regulations at around the same time. And then if we are talking about uh, notable activities in the rates market, uh, one achievement that I cannot fail to mention is that uh, Econ Holdings issued the country's first ever green bond. Uh, so if you're asking yourself uh, uh, what exactly is uh, a green bond, so a green bond uh, is a type of a fixed, in, uh, fixed income instruments uh, that raises uh, or collects funds and which uh, in which the funds now will be allocated towards uh, the development of environmental uh, friendly and sustainable properties. So Econ Holdings was among uh, was the first was the first uh, entity to issue a green bond in Kenya. So the bond was a five-year green bond uh, that was listed uh, on the Nairobi Securities Exchange, NSC, and it was issued in uh, partnership with private equity fund Helios. So um, it was floated in three tranches, and the final tranche uh, was floated in uh, 2021. And uh, in all circumstances, uh, the subscription rates were quite good, considering that rates are nascent uh, investment instruments in the country. And uh, in, in its last uh, tranche that was uh, floated in 2021, the bond attracted oh, an oversubscription rate of around 145%. So that was a good thing. So the funds were deployed towards the construction of uh, environment-friendly purpose-built student accommodation under the Kwetu and Kejani brands. I'm sure uh, several of us are familiar with the Kwetu hostels and the Kejani uh, hostels also. Um, and uh, Econ Group has already put up approximately uh, 1,000 hostel units all around Parklands, Jogo Road, 
Ruaraka under the Kwetu brands uh, using the proceeds of the bonds. And also we can give uh, progress in the rate sector. We can quantify it in terms of recent activities or notable happenings in the market. So in recently in February, that was February 5th, uh, NCBA Bank uh, was licensed to become a rate trustee uh, in Kenya. So what a rate trustee does uh, is basically to hold real estate assets on behalf of investors. And the trustee also acts um, on behalf of investors in the rate by assessing the feasibility of the investment proposal put forward by the rate manager and ensuring that the assets of the scheme are invested in accordance with the trust deed. So <clears throat> with NCBA Bank's recent entry, uh, the number of rates trustee in Kenya uh, stands at four. And uh, uh, these include NCBA Bank, uh, KCB Bank, Cooperative Bank, as well as Housing Finance. Uh, the other notable activity in the sector is um, uh, we, we have discussed that ECON issued a green bond, uh, which uh, they first floated in 2019. And the proceeds of the bond were to be used to finance environmental friendly purpose-built student accommodation under the Kwetu and Kajani wings. So one of those um, properties, that is Kwetu Abadea Heights, uh, was sold in December 2023 to the income arm, uh, the I-rate arm of Econ Holdings uh, in a 1.5 billion Kenyan shillings deal. So uh, the Kwetu Abadea Heights, along with other projects like Kwetu Wilson View, Kwetu Abadea Heights uh, 1, and Kwetu Hallingham, uh, were uh, 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 form part of some of the properties that were developed by Econ d and then were sold to Econ i -Rate. So the proceeds of these sales have been used as repayments for the Econ Green Bond. And the current, uh, currently the repayment for the bond stands at uh, around 3 billion. And uh, this we note uh, has been repaid ahead of the maturity that was in November 2024. And uh, uh what, another thing is in november 2023 uh the government proposed to revise the threshold for development rights to 100,000 kenyan shillings from 5 million so this one we um uh, the challenges this uh uh this new uh, how do you put it uh this revision proposed revision uh was supposed to encourage or stimulate the Kenyan rate market because, as we shall discuss later, uh, some of the challenges ailing the sector uh, include uh, some uh, the minimum capital, the high minimum capital uh, share capital requirements uh, in the rate sector uh, actually discourage or they they are a barrier to entry. So these are some of the key issues that are ailing the Kenyan rate sector. So in November 2023, the government had proposed uh, to revise the threshold and reduce it to 100,000 from 5 million. So this was uh, fronted during the annual general meeting of the Rates Association of Kenya. And uh, Principal Secretary Abubakar Hassan actually acknowledged that the sector's lackluster performance as well as stunted growth uh, was attributable to the high minimum share capital requirements that were discouraging entry to the Kenyan rate sector. So this in itself, if implemented, will be a good thing and will encourage investments into the Kenyan rate sector. Uh, one thing, uh, another thing that uh, cannot fail to mention is that uh, is the operational restructuring of Island Fahari. Uh, so we know that the rate was delisted uh, effective 12th February uh, this year. And the delisting was part of an operational restructuring that the rate manager was implementing. The rate manager is ICA Lion Asset Management, ILAM, was implementing. And uh, part, of, uh, a, part of the operational restructuring uh, was also the conversion of the rate to an to a restricted rate from an unrestricted rate. So what uh, essentially that means is that uh, investments in, in the rate is now limited to high net worth individuals or uh, professional investors who are purchasing units or hold units uh, worth uh, 5 million Kenyan shillings and above. And uh, lastly, uh, in 
February 2023, there was a proposition to develop a Kenya national rate. Uh, this was uh, a collaboration between the Capital Markets Authority, the Sanduku Investment Initiative, uh, the Association of Pension Fund Trust Pension Trustees and Administrators of Kenya APTAC, as well as NSC. So KNR was uh, supposed to be an accreditation body for rates and their stakeholders within the Kenyan rates market. However, uh, since the proposal of, was first floated in February 2023, there has been no further discussions uh, with regards to the matter, and uh, the Kenyan national rate uh, is yet to materialize. So, yeah, uh, those are some of the significant milestones or notable achievements uh, in the Kenyan rate sector so far. Thank you, Thank you Joseph. Uh, for that, uh, back to you, Alan. Like we all know, uh, in any market, the rate sector also faces their own share of challenges. So what are some of the obstacles confronting the REITs market in Kenya? Uh, thank you, Joseph. I'll just uh, try to hurry because I can see the time is almost up. Uh, so in Kenya, we also face uh, a challenge in the REITs sector, just like in any market. Uh, so uh, one of the challenges uh, that uh, Effie has mentioned is the high capital uh, requirements for trustees. So presently, Kenya has just four entities as uh, rate trustees, that is, uh, as, as Effie has mentioned, and this is in contrast uh, with South Africa, who allow a broader range of entities, uh, including public companies, approved institutions or banks to serve as trustees, resulting in a more extensive uh, pool of trustees available. So uh, to enhance the rates uh, market uh, accessibility, it's essential uh, to encourage more corporate uh, entities to seek rate trustee licenses, which will necessitate a review of the minimum share capital requirement, which currently stands at 100, Kenyan, 100 million Kenyan shillings. Uh, this side threshold uh, restricts uh, trustee roles solely to banks, uh, limiting the diversity of potential participants uh, in the market. Uh, there's also a prolonged uh, approval process, uh, which uh, is creating a challenge in the REITs market in Kenya. This approval process is often lengthy and also complex, involving various regulatory approvals. Uh, the, this bureaucratic procedure can deter potential uh, issuers and investors, leading to delays in bringing risk to the market. There is also a challenge of a high minimum asset size for investment companies. As per the regulation set by the CMA, the minimum threshold for initial uh, assets stands at 300 million Kenyan shillings for I rates, 100 million for D rates. Uh, as you can see, these requirements uh, pose a challenge for many companies uh, in the country to attain, uh, since they cannot attain and uh, manage these assets, uh, making it uh, particularly difficult for medium and small startups to enter into the rate market. Uh, consequently, uh, this high entry barrier will discourage uh, investment uptake, as achieving the initial asset thresholds typically the substantial investments in real estate, limiting opportunities uh, for small players to participate in the market. Uh, there's also a limited investor knowledge uh, since uh, uh, investors in Kenya uh, lack sufficient understanding of rates as a financial asset class. And this lack of an awareness uh, leads to reluctance or caution in investing concerning the market demand and growth. There's also an opacity of exact returns of... Uh, uh, so even though the, uh, the regulators, that is CMA, have tried to make rates transparent, they still a problem. Investors can't accurately figure out how much profit each property owned by a rate is making. And this is because there aren't uh, clear rules or standards uh, for cal calculating space, uh, especially for top quality commercial properties. So investors might not know exactly how well the investments are doing, making it harder for them to make informed decisions. There are also aren't enough high quality properties available for investment in Kenya. Uh, a case example is where 
Stanley Fahari Irate had trouble finding uh, good properties to invest in. So they had to ask uh, for more time from uh, the regulators. Uh, they struggled to meet uh, the requirement for having 75% of the income generating assets uh, in the real estate within two years. So because of this, there aren't, uh, because there aren't many good properties on the market, uh, they ended up buying properties uh, in Nairobi's industrial area, which is not that known for being a high performing area. So based on this example, it shows that uh, the limited availability of top-notch uh, properties uh, poses a challenge for us to meet the investment goals within the required time frame. So if we can address this challenge uh, as a market, uh, we require to make concerted uh, efforts. Uh, uh, this will include the market participants, the regulators, and even uh, ask the stakeholders to streamline uh, the regulations in place, enhance investor education, improve market infrastructure. So if we can uh, overcome these obstacles, uh, the rent market can unlock its full potential just like South Africa has done, driving uh, economic growth and providing investors with attractive opportunities in the real estate sector. Thank you. Thank you, Alan, for that. Now, with the mentioned challenges, I will direct this question to Effie. What policies or initiatives could the, our country implement in order to enhance our rate market and also make it more vibrant? Um, okay. So the very first, uh, we have established that the, high, the, the minimum share capital requirements are quite high and are therefore a barrier towards entry into the Kenyan REITs uh, market. So I think uh, we start first by uh, reducing these uh, very high minimum share capital requirements. So if you look at uh, share capital requirements for trustees is around 10 million, 100 million Kenyan shillings. If you look at uh, capital requirements, uh, share capital requirements for pension funds, trustees uh, in Kenya is around 10 million. So I think um, the high minimum uh, share capital requirements limit have, or have limited uh, the role of trustees to only banks. Uh, because if you look at all the four trustees in Kenya, they are actually all of them are banks uh, who are not interested in development of capital markets. Uh, and in any event, banking uh, markets are supposed to be competing with and not supervising the capital markets. And the other thing is, um, when you're discussing about uh, reducing the minimum uh, amounts, uh, we can look at also the minimum amount for the development rate. Um, this can be lowered even further from just the 100,000 Kenyan shillings to at least uh, 10,000, also too much uh, needed, uh, the amounts needed for a pension fund uh, trustee. If you look at places like the United States even, they don't even have minimum share capital requirements. So uh, why exactly are we uh, as Kenya, why do we have minimum share capital requirements? So even as we are discussing the possibility of reducing uh, these uh, very high share capital requirements, uh, I think it's about time that we change the conversation to no, now not reducing and towards now abolishing these minimum investments uh, requirements. So removing this uh, barrier would encourage greater participation in the rate market uh, by lowering entry barriers. The other thing is, uh, in Kenya currently, rates are structured as trusts. But if you look at um, rates markets for other countries, rates can either be structured as a partnership, a limited company, a limited liability company. They can be structured as societies. So I think it's time that, uh, as Kenya, we allow uh, all forms of legal entities to, to form rates. And the other thing is um, we can also look at the possibility of incorporating hybrid rates rather than the current rigid framework uh, over de of either, it, has, it, it either has to be a development rate or an income rate, I rate. So we can look at the possibility of uh, having a hybrid, uh, a hybrid rate rather than a fixed uh, uh, rigid uh, framework. And um, uh, the other thing we can uh, look at as a country to stimulate the Kenyan rate market is provide flexibility in listing options. 
uh, the law currently requires that rates go public uh, immediately. So um, we can uh, accord rates the choice to either go public or remain private. And if they choose to uh, remain private, we can set a specific amount of time that after that now will require it uh, to go public. So there is not really no rush uh, in asking entities uh, to go public immediately. Yeah, so these are some of the things that if implemented, the Kenyan rates market um, could recover and also perform well or catch up to its um, predecessors and uh, such as South Africa and also uh, in the developing. Um, also, something that uh, can be done again is reducing the uh, bureaucracy that is required to form a rate in Kenya. As it is, the approval process is a very lengthy one. So we should look at, uh, and it takes anywhere between one or two years. So we can look at perhaps reducing the bureaucracy uh, process uh, in the formation of Kenyan rates. And uh, uh, lastly, um, like we said, uh, there is a problem of uh, investors. They have limited knowledge as to what uh, rates are and uh, why they should actually be encouraged to invest in rates. So we as a country can do more uh, to teach investors or pre uh, present the information out there so that investors are aware that rates um, are also great investment avenues and instruments that they can pursue. Yeah. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, Joseph? Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, I think that was well uh, answered. So now I'm going to open the forum for question and answers. And also you can also give your comment if you have any. Any questions, you can also type. So I'll give it uh, one minute. If none, we are going to close. I can see we have written uh, 54 minutes of our time. And also I would like to recommend to our listeners, you can visit uh, our website, uh, Site on Investments and go and read more about the Real Estate Investment Trust uh, progress in Kenya. That is our latest uh, report so that you can have more insights on the same. Any question, comment? So if none, I would give this chance to our panelists. You can give your closing remarks at, as you wind up. Alan? Uh, just like to say to our listeners, uh, thank you for coming in into the space. Thank you for listening. Uh, Let's champion for uh, improving our REITs market uh, by uh, speaking out and also uh, trying to improve uh, the regulations uh, in place uh, since uh, it is our market and it is us who can improve financing uh, generally in the real estate sector. Uh, thank you and uh, uh, thank you for listening to me. Uh, okay, thank you, Joseph, and thank you to our listeners uh, for tuning in. I believe it was quite an informative session, and for you to you can also get uh, more information regarding uh, rates on the topicals that we have done. So, as Joseph has said, uh, the rates topical is the most recent one that we have done, which we covered last week. So, you can just go look up uh, more information on rates, and uh, yeah, thank you for attending. Uh, so, as we wind up. I would like to thank everyone for tuning in to into today's uh, session. And um, thank you for having us. And also I would like to urge um, our listeners, as always, you can come up with um, your recommendations and we can also pick them up and uh, we share in our reports and uh, so that we can take our real estate market to uh, upper heights. So with that now, I'm going to close the session. And I look forward to having many, many, meaningful discussions in the real estate sector. You have a, so we can close for, for today. And thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for having us.